My name's Ian Smythe. I'm a senior director in the client line of business. At Arm Holdings, correct? Yeah. <laughs> so Arm Holdings has been a subsidiary of SoftBank for about two years now or a little bit more? A bit less. A little less? Yeah. Uh, how do you feel the company has uh, changed and how does how's that acquisition benefited uh, you folks? I think uh, being uh, held privately has been a benefit in terms of we've been able to be more strategic around our investments across the business. Yeah, it's interesting because when you're a publicly held company, you're judged on an every 90 day basis. When you're a private company, sure, you can do that internally, but it's not the driving force. You don't have to worry about, oh, we're going to miss these numbers. You're not in a situation like Apple where they have to guide down and you're... The shareholder value, I think, is easier to retain over time when you're private, right? It's, I mean, we are focused on uh, running our business successfully mm -hmm. and making sure that, uh, that we can meet the needs of our new shareholder. Uh -huh. And I think what's, what's really interesting about your company was that at a time where Intel was focused on maybe some lesser, uh, some worse power consumption device, uh, chipsets and other companies were, were trying to figure out cell phones. You folks had a very intelligent system on a chip design or architecture that was also low power consumption. It, can you talk about how interesting it was to see technology catch up to your IP and in that like that mid two thousands area, that two thousand seven where you know the H A series chip came out and whatnot? I can't go back that far. <laughs> <laughs> I've not been with them that long, okay. so I can't. I can't talk to. I can do some big picture, I guess. Yeah, sure, but um, today. I, I, uh, I think ARM's DNA is around um, efficient compute. Mm -hmm. If that's, if that's the, you know, something that we do brilliantly, that's what we do brilliantly. And I think that has enabled a lot of innovation and transformation around initially the smartphone, but now increasingly around other forms of compute across the industry. And I think that is probably what you're referring to. Oh, absolutely. Right? Okay. And, uh, you know, what, what we're seeing, you know, it started with, say, just smartphones and, you know, Samsung's licensing from you, Apple's licensing from you. You're kind of at the heart of that revolution. We're 10 years into that at that point, at this point. Where do you think this intelligent, uh, you know, power consumption, you know, intelligent device or uh, chip architecture, where do you think it's going? in the next you know, five to 10 years, where do you see opportunities either in automotive or, or different areas that might not have been consumer electronics or tech as much 10 years ago? Like, Where do you feel that ARM is gonna help in the future? I think there's a, there, there are a few instances where we can see innovation being enabled by efficient compute, by intelligent compute. And I, I, you know, initially that's um, around evolution of the smartphone. We can see that in large screen compute devices now. Um, we talked earlier, uh, we're in 2019, we talked in 2018, second half, uh, of our roadmap for compute. Um, we talked how those roadmaps were introduced across the client area and we talked around how the new products and new processes will be introduced in 2019, 2020 that will give even more performance. And then in we talked about those roadmaps in safe computing, right? So the introducing the performance and the safety angle for the autonomous compute. And then we introduced the line of Neoverse and we introduced a roadmap for infrastructure-based compute. And I think you can see that the DNA around efficient compute has been maintained and deployed into those market areas. And we're looking forward to seeing the outcome, you know, those roadmap being deployed in products over the next two, three, four, five years, and seeing the changes they make in each of those markets. You know, as uh, people are iterating upon the ARM architecture, you know, when they're they're licensing, they're building their own system on a chip. You see Apple, for instance, at uh, their press conference last year, where they're saying the iPad Pro might be faster than some laptops. It's faster than the Xbox One S. Do you see a future where maybe uh, energy, uh, you know, com uh, products that need energy efficiency, like say a laptop. Do you think there's a future where ARM chips could be inside of laptops instead of maybe your competitors like Intel or AMD? That future is now? Yeah. Right? So ARM 10, ARM, Windows 10, ARM based devices, Windows on Snapdragon devices are available today mm -hmm. to buy. Um, I use one um, as my primary uh, device. Uh, 
it's great, right? It has proper all day battery life. It runs uh, in excess of day. I, I won't bring the charger to the building. I can use it all day. I, I probably won't charge it tonight. Use it tomorrow as well. Fantastic. It's always connected. It's got an LTE connection. So I have data at my fingertips. I don't, I'm completely independent and I can use it. So those devices are already happening, they're deployed. Mm -hmm. Windows 10 and the partnership we have with Microsoft and Qualcomm to bring Windows on Snapdragon into market is, is working really, really well. There's multiple OEMs building these devices and we expect to see more during 2019. I have to remember it's still 2019. <laughs> I've made that switch. Yeah. Oh yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, I just, I, I, I definitely think that's like a, that's one area where it seems kind of obvious. Uh, you know, we went from smartphone to tablet and then with Microsoft Surface Book and a lot of other devices, they're already kind of hybrid laptop tablets. Yeah. And the idea of all day battery life, it's just interesting as, as the ARM uh, architecture innovates, it's catching up to what were really beefy desktop CPUs that people were shoving into laptops for years. Uh, so I think, I don't know when, when it was, it seems like last year was kind of a pivotal point for you when it comes to that. Well, I think, you know, there has been a perception around performance of efficient compute from ARM that is low, low, lower performance. And that's not necessarily the case. And if you look at our roadmap that we published in August, you can see that their performance is on a par with equivalent devices in today's you know, laptop class device. And so we look at that and we say, can we remove that barrier to that perception and create and win the, uh, the market and those devices based on the real performance of those devices and the consumer experience that we're improving by bringing the long battery life and the always connected. Mm -hmm. And then in the second instance, we talked to when we launched uh, the Neoverse around efficient compute in high-end compute, high-performance compute, right? And we have uh, HPC applications, um, with Fujitsu bringing uh, high performance compute into supercomputers and then also um, Amazon at uh, Ignite announced the available of ARM-based EC2 instances. So we have all of this capability, this compute capability that's highly efficient and available now. So it changes the game, I think, in the way that ARM is perceived. It's not just about efficiency, it's also about performance. I'd like to shift the conversation a little bit towards your business model because I think it's, as a former shareholder of ARM and someone who's just kind of admired the company from afar, I think it's been rather brilliant. And I know you weren't at the company in the, the early days, but I think it, the model is why you folks survived to the next golden age of technology from the early 2000s to the late 2000s. Uh, you don't really have a fab. You don't make your own chips. You're licensing the technology. So what I think is brilliant is that uh, a lot of the other chip companies say take the risks, you know, Qualcomm or, you know, Apple or whoever is actually licensing your tech, they're taking the risk in manufacturing the chips. You folks are uh, able to collect royalties, right? Isn't that the, the main so source of revenue? So it's a shared risk, shared reward model, right? Okay. In terms of we try and create a win-win environment. We call our customers partners mm -hmm. and they genuinely are. Uh, they license our IP and then when uh, they are successful, they pay us a royalty on the chips that they, okay. they ship. So that balance and that engagement ensures that both ARM and the partner are committed to making the devices, the OEMs and the silicon partners successful. Mm -hmm. So it's, it becomes a win-win relationship. And I think you're right about how that is a, is a great model for being successful and continuing to be successful and working with our partners to make sure that RIP meets their future demands. And you know, uh, so you, you've had, you laid out a roadmap last year. Um, where do you think, uh, where do you think the technology should be focusing its resources on? You know, we're at CES 2019. It seems kind of all over the place from my first few days here. There's, there's a lot of stuff wow. going on, uh, you know, 
So, uh, you know, from a business standpoint, where do you think it's intelligent for ARM to really place your bet when it comes to innovation? Is it still like, you know, you're balancing two things with your server side technology and then also your mobile uh, pro processor technology. Is it performance? Is it power consumption? Is it both? Is it just this? Is it very simple that you've had the same philosophy and you just keep going down that road? Or? I don't think it's simple. I think that balance and choosing the right performance points are, are things we take very seriously mm -hmm. both in architectural design and in choosing where we choose the performance points for our processes, whether it's CPUs, GPUs or network processing units. Mm -hmm. um, what we do do is we work very closely with the partnership to ensure that we're trying to match the demands with the performance points that we're producing. Mm -hmm. And I just, this is probably the last question, but I just, I, I'm curious, uh, I haven't got to talk to a lot of tech executives about this. Uh, the U.S. government's in a trade war with China right now, and it's affected uh, share prices, at the very least, of a lot of chip makers, a lot of tech companies. There's some fights going over IP. Uh, do you, are you seeing this? Are you, are you seeing uh, any kind of signs of a recession or slowdown in your business, or are you not allowed to talk about that? I, I, don't, think I'm in a, I don't think I'm in a position to comment on. Okay. At this point. Okay. No problem. Okay. It's just it was something I, I thought I should ask. Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> well, appreciate your time. Thank you You're so welcome. much. You're welcome.